Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing very well today. In this video, I'm gonna be upgrading my humble Squire. Now, I absolutely love Squire guitars and I've owned a ton of them over the years. They give you kind of access to some of those classic Fender tones without having to spend a bunch of money. But today, what we're gonna do is address some of the weaknesses on the Squire and upgrade it to kind of compete with the player or even the American series. Now, if you're anything like me and you like to do guitar builds, well, working with a Fender is pretty much as good as it gets. The aftermarket support for Fender guitars is next level. Here's an example of a Telecaster we did on the channel. Of course, if you're a longtime subscriber, you will recognize this guitar, one of the nicest tops uh, I've ever seen. And of course, a channel bound neck which makes uh, playing on this telly something special. Here's an example of a 3D printed body we did on uh, a Stratocaster with that true temperament neck. So these are just kind of two extreme examples of what you can do with Fender. Uh, the aftermarket support is insane. Now, as for this Squire, well, I'm not gonna be doing anything quite so extreme. Those were very intense and expensive builds. And after all, this is a Squire, but this is Squire's take on a vintage 50s Stratocaster. So it already has a very beautiful aesthetic to it. There's not a ton of guitars in this, you know, Fiesta Red and uh, Maple Neck. Not uncommon, but you don't see them every day. And I really, really love the way this looks. So what we're gonna do is talk about the parts that I wanna put on. And uh, maybe in a follow-up video, I'm gonna do a tone test between what we do here today and maybe a player Strat and an American Strat and see how our little Squire can handle those guitars. So here are the main areas I'd like to upgrade on this guitar. Number one, the trem system. Yes, you can make a Squire trem system work. I prefer a two-point <laughs> trem on a Squire. I find that a lot easier to work with, and it does give me a little bit more confidence. Uh, you know, you can make this work, but at the end of the day, if you're gonna be outperforming or recording, I don't know that I would have the confidence to use the stock one. So this is an area we're gonna upgrade. There's not a ton of options for the, the import, like the, the overseas uh, trem system with the six screws. So we're gonna talk about one of the best options that I think is out there. So we'll look at that in a second. Uh, number two, the pickups. Now, and the switches and of course the small pots. So we're gonna look at that as well. I do like uh, the, the pickups here, they're Alnico. They've got a good amount of chime. They're not particularly quiet, like <laughs> compared to like some of the other you know, American or, or player series. Uh, overall, I like them. Uh, pots and switches definitely have to go if we're upgrading this. So we're gonna upgrade the electronics on the guitar and of course um, the tuning machines as well. I wanna keep the aesthetic of this guitar. So we're gonna talk about vintage style locking tuners that aren't gonna, you know, ruin the aesthetic of like a 50s Stratocaster. So here we go, let's look at the parts. Those are the main areas I'd like to address. Other than that, love the weight of the guitar, love the neck profile, uh, love the aesthetics. So here we go, let's look at the parts we're gonna add. All right, you guys, here it is. Here's the bridge upgrade. This is the full contact hardware from Babbage. Interesting bridge for sure. On the bottom here, it says over 50 times more string transference compared to traditional saddles. We'll see if it's a noticeable upgrade. One of the things I like about this is, check it out, still a six screw system, which means installing it should be super easy. No permanent mods to the guitar. That's one of the things when you're talking about like wanting to keep, I don't know, the vintage aspect of it, um, being able to add and remove parts without, you know, modifying your guitar. That's important to me. So there you go. Um, there's a little quick look at the, the saddles. Definitely a little different. This is gonna be, I think the piece that, you know, hopefully changes the guitar in terms of like really using that trim system um, and keeping the six screw system. So there you go. That's the Babis. Uh, here's the other thing, check it out new tuners. Now, as you can see, it says Fender Genuine Parts. Uh, as you can also see, vintage tuners. But one of the first things in the package here, these were uh, through Solo Music Gear. I'll link to the parts in case you guys want to add them to your own builds. Uh, all the parts will be in the video description, but check it out, Godo. So I think even though these are like, there you go, Godo Magnum Lock tuners. So what I like about this, again, no permanent mod, looks exactly like the tuning machines uh, that we're taking off. They're unbranded, it's gonna look exactly the same, but we've got a locking mechanism. So between this and the bridge, I should be able to like whammy my heart out, <laughs> even if it's just some light vibrato or whatever, 
or some dies. We'll try it all out for sure. Once we stretch the strings out, uh, we'll do full tone and, and uh, you know, just test it all out. So there we go. Uh, it says it's Fender Genuine Parts. Uh, here is, again, this was through Solo, but I'll put the part number. Made in Japan, as you guys can see there, uh, from Fender but it looks like they were actually manufactured by Godot. All right, you guys, let's get to the build. Fingers crossed that that bridge will drop straight in. I haven't, you know, uh, pre-fit any of these parts. Let's do it together in real time. Here we go. All right, you guys, so I've taken the strings off. I've also removed the neck. Uh, it's just gonna be a lot easier to, uh, you know, film and show you guys uh, when I can do the individual parts. Uh, six screws to remove. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, good idea to hang on to these. Uh, the Babic 6 system uh, comes with all new hardware, so we don't need to keep them, but a uh, good idea just to maybe keep the trim and you know all the parts in a Ziploc, label them in case you ever want to put it back to stock or whatever, give the parts away to someone else so you know exactly where they came from. All right. So there are the six screws loosened, and then we're going to remove the screws from the back side here. So there still is tension kind of holding everything uh, together because as soon as we remove those, everything will just fall apart. So we'll uh, remove these springs now and uh, yeah, everything should uh, come apart. And here we go, the bridge is free. Now, purely for curiosity, let's see if there's a difference between the weight on the bridges. This is the stock Squire bridge. Looks like it's coming in at 214 grams. Let's go ahead and put the Babix one on here. And it is a little heavier, 251. So 215 basically, or 214 to 251. Not a huge difference, uh, but it does weigh a little bit more. Now in terms of the overall shapes, there's not that much difference between the two bridges. Here is the Squire one, here's the new upgraded Babix one. So you can see there's a slight difference in block shape, not you know, huge. Uh, the big difference, of course, is the saddles, a different shape on the saddles. Uh, the plates themselves look very, very similar in terms of the thickness of the overall plates. Uh, no massive difference in, in any case, mostly the saddle shape and a slight difference in the block. Um, other than that, let's see if this one is going to drop right in. Again, I haven't tried it. Let's do it together. Okay, you guys, here we go. Moment of truth. According to the guys from Solo Music Gear, uh, this bridge should drop straight in on an import Squire six screw system. Here we go. I think we're good. <laughs> we'll just make sure. Yeah, looks like all the holes match up perfect, perfectly right there. As you guys can see, that is a relief because as I said, there's not a ton of options for, you know, this type of Squire to give it like a really high performance. Uh, bridge. So what I'm going to do is just kind of index it, I think here. Let me just grab my drill and let's just do the first string and the sixth string just to make sure everything. I'm just going to sort of set them up like that and then I'll I'll put them in by hand. And here's sixth string. All right, you guys, let's install our three new springs. I'm tempted just to put two in and see, you know, what that's like. I do tend to like a little bit more of a slinky type feel on my tram, but I'm just going to go with the, the three and just uh, see what that's like. And then if I need to make any uh, adjustments, we'll do that here later. I didn't actually uh, bring the, sp the spring claw any closer. I probably should have, but we'll see if we can get those springs on. There we go. And number three. There we go. So we got our three springs on the trim and on the top side. Uh, I just sort of, uh, as you can see, just kind of loosely put the screws in. Um, they all have that uh, kind of a smooth shank towards the top of them. So uh, the trim can really pivot on them. So you just want to make sure that the threading is into the guitar. And then of course the smooth uh, shaft at the top is what the trim's gonna pivot on. It also has a new trim bar. So uh, yeah, looking good. Now be advised that this trim system does come with a threaded bar. So, you know, if I'm doing a more modern build, I definitely want a pop-in bar with a little set screw. Uh, here we're talking about uh, a threaded bar, which as you guys know, is not my favorite, but hopefully this one will be very responsive and we'll be able to get the threading just in the spot where we want it. So there we go. 
We've got the three springs on the back. It's got a pretty heavy feel right now, so I think I might loosen up uh, the, the, the claw at first. And if that doesn't do it, um, then do some other adjustments. So I'm just gonna loosen off these two screws if you've never adjusted a trim. That's gonna bring uh, the whole claw back, which is going to put less tension on each spring, which hopefully then, well, not hopefully, it will make this a little bit lighter. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna wait till I put the, the, the strings on because obviously the tension of the strings will bring the, the trim up a little bit. But just like this, uh, yeah, it's a little bit too heavy. So we'll adjust that as we go along. Uh, but right away, uh, <laughs> yeah, it gives a very custom look uh, to the Squire. All right, you guys, now let's turn our attention to the neck. So. One of the main things to know is when you're removing these vintage style tuning machines is to make sure you have the right screwdriver. These are not high quality screws, especially on Squires. Uh, they strip out easy. So I like using just a very small light screwdriver. So this is what I'm using, just a tiny little screwdriver. Um, and that's, you know, should be plenty. Just make sure, like I said, uh, they're not high quality hardware. So bear that in mind. All right, so this one's coming loose, so we can remove that. Uh, we do have new screws, but you might, again, want to keep track of all those little screws. So there's one in between each tuning machine. And these are coming out really nice, no stripping, no nothing. So that's really, really good. Now, hopefully I can keep the stock bushings in here for the tuning machines. These are not 10 millimeter holes, so bear that in mind, lots of uh, tuning machines are 10 like standard 10 millimeters that's like the modern standard everything is 10 mil but when you're talking about vintage style ones uh, they are much smaller so that's something that you do need to be aware of let's grab uh, the new ones and put them in all right you guys let's see if our new tuning machines drop right in seeing as they're an official fender part i'm assuming they will here we go and let's check on the front with that uh that bushing yeah perfect Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now there are no specific orders other than your first string and your sixth string um, have that extra uh, screw hole there. So bear that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the first one and we'll see if that just lines up. Looks pretty good. And it's threading wonderfully. There we go. So first one in, as you can see, I'm gonna have to adjust it a little bit um, in terms of this, the next one, but it will keep the screws loose so I can just tip them. And uh, yeah, let's install the rest. All right, so here's a look at the brand new tuning machines. Now, I absolutely love these. They look exactly the same as the stock ones, right down to the lines on the back. Uh, no thumb wheels, no you know intricate system on the back. That would give away that these are locking tuners. So I love that. That just you know, it's gonna go perfect with our sleeper vibe on uh, the Squire. Now, how these work is there's a little, well, basically a threaded section on the top. So I'll take a shot for you guys here. So you remove the, or you loosen the threaded section. I'm removing it so you can see, hopefully right there. Yeah, and basically you loosen it, string goes through, and then you tighten it just with a pick or a coin or something like that, or a screwdriver. Um, and then you tighten it down and it's completely locked. So each one of the tuning machines just has a threaded section that you loosen, put your string through, tighten, and then tune up. So very, very simple. Like I said, aesthetically looks completely stock. Really, really love that. So I've got the high performance bridge on our 50s Squire. I'm hopeful that this will enable me to play this guitar as I wanna play it. No compromises, flutters, dives, floating, all that kind of stuff while remaining in tune. So fingers crossed on that one. And of course we've got our locking tuners, which is gonna help as well because you don't have all those coils around each post. And as you use the bar, they're sort of tightening and loosening just by little amounts and putting your guitar out. Uh, this is gonna lock everything down. It looks period correct. And of course, string changes are gonna be a breeze. So that's awesome. Now, one thing I did wanna get your opinion on is uh, a few years ago, probably two or three years ago, uh, I put these block inlays on a Telecaster neck. Uh, this is from, I think, Fretlook. They went in super easy. They still look great years later. Um, I'm gonna put it into the neck pocket of our Squire. Just want your guys' opinion if I should do something like this. Yay or nay on the blocks. Obviously, it's gonna give like, a much more kind of custom look to the Squire. It's not gonna be as like, 
flying under the radar, I, I guess, with the blocks, especially up again on maple. Like that's, you know, it's kind of a bold move. So give me the thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, let me know uh, if I should do something like this or just go straight sleeper. So make sure you guys stick around for part two where I'm going to gut all the electronics, pots, switches, pickups, they're all gone. I'm going to upgrade them with, I think, a set that's going to really uh, waken up this guitar. I think it's going to be really good. And as I mentioned, then we're going to assemble the whole guitar and compare it against a Fender Player Series and a Fender American Series and see how our little Strat does. Should be really interesting. Stick around for part two. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. All the parts I used in this build will be listed down in the video description below. You can check them out down there. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so. Uh, stick around for part two. Should be a lot of fun. Take care.